Um, so what I like to do, so I, I never work in 500 by 440. If anything, I do a lot of work that gets put up onto something like YouTube, and I want to be able for YouTube viewers and for myself to be able to see that I have, there's an HD version in terms of resolution. The easiest way to ensure that is I set my animate document to 1920 by 1080. I prefer 24 frames per second. That's sort of a standard animation frame rate. You can choose anything you want. Standard uh, video frame rate in the um, in America is 30 frames per second, or actually technically it's 29.97, uh, which you could actually type that in. You can literally go 29.97, and that could be your frame rate. But again, I prefer 24, and when I export to video, to it'll um, it'll change the frame rate without affecting the animation. It does an algorithm where it becomes a 30 frame. Uh, frames per second document, whatever. So what I do is I set this up. Uh, I can set the background color. I think the, the default is pure white. I actually like setting it to just, you know, maybe a neutral gray, something like that. Because sometimes I'll work with characters or animations that are all white, and I want to make sure that they're if they're filled in with white, I can tell. There's some contrast between that and the background. So before I click OK to create this document, I just click the Make Default button. And then that now this becomes my default for all new documents that I create from here on out. OK, so that's basically what I do. All right. Thank you, Devin Downer. So I click OK and here I am. Here's my document. Now, a couple of things about the interface. What you're looking at is going to look my my space my workspace is a little bit it's gonna look a little different than yours i'm gonna go up here to make it look like yours out of the box animate okay so i'm gonna go to essentials and i'm gonna say reset essentials so this is what it's gonna look like out of the box and i'll show you um, how to change uh the workspace and how to save workspaces and stuff like that it's pretty cool it's pretty neat um the toolbar all the way off to the side here is great but sometimes depending on your screen resolution you select a tool as I just did here this brush tool you'll see all the way down there's uh, the toolbox updates to show you uh, any and all sub selections and sometimes there's more tools or sub selection tools than the UI allows for there's not enough room so sometimes they just get cut off and there's no scroll to get to them it just sort of is what it is. So I, you know, sometimes you've just maxed out screen real estate just because your screen resolution is as high as it can go. And, and you know, it's kind of like the problem that uh, Floofy's having with the uh, animated GIF exporter. All right. So what I like to do, you can undock stuff. You can undock the entire thing if you want. I don't want to do that, actually. I want to snap it back in. Well, I messed it up. So let's reset essentials one more time. I want to be able to grab... Uh, it's a little clunky. Hold on. I always grab the wrong thing, but I want to... Yeah, there it is. So if by grabbing this little black, you know, the darker bar, all right, I can move the tools, undock it, and move it anywhere I want. Now it can be this square here. I can resize it, and you can see everything kind of change. You know, so now when I select a tool, like, say, the brush tool or whatever, all I can see all of my sub-selections. So uh, here's the hand tool, obviously doesn't have as many, so I'm not going to see as many. Uh, but what I like to do is I like to have it docked. So I, I've just learned, and this is also something Toon Boom does, they have a nice uh, tool bar across the, the top. And for me, just that's just a personal thing. I kind of like it up there. I see everything. There's enough screen real estate for me to see everything. All my tools, all my sub-selection tools, okay? Uh, so that's what I like. For the most part, having everything on the right side is fine. Sometimes, um, I don't know, I'll have some things off to the left or whatever. But let's just say, let's just say we wanted to do that. Let's just say we wanted to move stuff off to the left. We can literally grab it and hover, and you'll see that blue vertical line. And I just release, and now everything is... Now I have another column over here, uh, or another set of panels off to the left. I'm going to grab library. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to hover it next to properties. And you'll see it'll become like this tabbed interface now between library and properties. And now here's this other 
toolbar. So let's do, let's drag that over and put that there. What these are, are just other panels like color and swatches and align, there's info, transform, there's all these things, motion presets. And if there's anything you don't think you'll ever need, you can just hit this little upper right hand menu bar or button and then say close. You know, and here's my um, Adobe stock library, my CC libraries. Uh, and so if this is what you like, let's just say it is like, ah, oh, I love this setup. This is awesome. Um, and you can even widen this if you want, but it, it'll only go so far in terms of how thin you can get it, right? But I can hit this button up here to collapse the icons, right? And I can have it so that it's wide enough to let me actually see the, the names of those panels, or I can click that edge and make it even thinner. And then I can always expand it again. So if I like this, I want this to always be my default. I can go up here where it says essentials, right? And I can say, this is my new workspace. And I can just say, um, I don't know, let's call this uh, anything you want. I'm gonna call it left column and hit enter. So now I can go and say, you know what, I want to go back to essentials and then I can change my mind and say, I like what I had before and go left column and do that. I actually have done, th uh, I've set up workspaces so that if I just want to be in design mode, okay, like where I'm designing characters and doing lots of layering, I don't need the wasted space of the timeline showing me everything to the right. I just want to, I want the timeline to work like, let's say a Photoshop layers panel. So what I'll do is this, I'll undock this. I don't need my output panel, so let's just close that. And I'm gonna do, let's just put layers off to the left. Let's completely change this. So let me grab this, undock it for now. Grab layers, I'm sorry, timeline panel, put it over here. All right, the width is probably fine. I only want it to show one frame. Again, I want this just to be a layers panel, okay? And I think the width is fine. And let's say I want to have colors over here. This is, I'm going to be in design mode. This is what I'm going to create, a design centric panel. Let's do this. Swatches. I'm going to hover. Now, if I hover swatches here, it'll become like a tabbed interface within the color bar like this. Right, so I can access it like this. But if I want it to be showing all the time, I'm gonna hover down here and it shows up as a separate panel that's sort of persistently there and visible. Properties, I'll keep that open. Library, I don't really need open. Align, I might want open. So let's do the same thing. Let's have align right here. I can still kind of play with the positioning there. Do I want transform? Yeah, why not? Let's have transform be a sub, uh, sort of a, a tabbed interface with a line. And everything else I can get rid of that. Properties, do I want properties? This is gonna be, I, I don't think I want properties yet. I don't know, let's just say I don't. And so now what I'll do, so this is sort of set up for now for drawing, okay? So I can draw stuff and just focus and concentrate on that. So what I'm gonna do is say, uh, new workspace, and let's just call it design. So now this is my design workspace. Cool. So now what I want to do, let's go back to uh, left column and let's say, let's just set up a animation friendly workspace, which I think this pretty much already is, but let's set it up a little bit more. So let's say I'm finished with the design. Okay. I just want to catch up with chat because I totally ignored it for the last five minutes. Hero. Hey, how are you? And Anna Jean. Hello. Good to see you guys there. All right, so I'm done with the, the design aspect of, of my project or whatever it is I'm working on. And now it's like animation time. So I know I won't need... I didn't want to undock that, but fine. Let's undock these. We can close these design uh, specific tools. And timeline down at the bottom, great. Some people like the timeline up at the top. I don't, I'm more of, I come from like a little bit more of a video editing world where the timeline's always at the bottom. It just, I don't know, works for me. Um, 
properties. Yeah, I'm gonna want properties definitely open for animation because the way I nest stuff and I'll show you guys how to nest stuff. Library panel, yeah, let's definitely have the library panel open. And I think that's all I want in terms of uh, animation and tools needed. Uh, I think that's all I'm gonna need. I don't, I don't foresee anything else that's gonna be necessary to have persistently on the screen and open at any time. The frame pricker, yes, but I'm gonna explain why maybe later. I don't want that. Um, there's a reason why. But anyway, I love using the frame picker, but it's very specific. So let's just leave that as is. And I'm just going to quickly say new workspace and call it animation. All right, so that's, I don't know, sort of an overview of the Animate CC UI and how you can kind of customize it to look the way you want. You can even go to, uh, sorry, I'm so used to my Mac. Um, trying to find preferences and you can specify the lighter UI as well some people like that I know like Mike Milo who's on after me it has it set to light um, and this is more of a throwback to the way it used to be when it was called flash and Macromedia was developing it um, I personally like the dark interface so I've left it as that but just so you are aware you can have it light you can enable or disable shading but I leave it at the default I like the dark, or I've just gotten used to it. 